Hey everybody and welcome back to Death Studio. In this video I'm going to talk about lighting. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification button. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump into this. So light, what is it all about? What is light? Light, light, light. Lighty, lighty, lighty. Well, light is essentially everything in Dash Studio. It is the absolute number one, most important thing, full stop, period, end of chat, don't care what you say, that's what it is. And to demonstrate how important it is, I'm just going to quickly create a plane, like so. There we go, we've got a plane, it's half a meter across, doesn't matter, so there you go. We can see it because we're not in NVIDIA IRO mode. We'll go into NVIDIA IRO mode. And in our environment settings, I'm going to change this to scene only. Okay, oh bollocks, it's disappeared. Why is it disappeared? Because there's no light source. You can't see a damn thing without light. You could have the sexiest, hottest, nudiest, most hardcoreist, bonkinest models in the world in this window. But without any light, you can't see the damn things at all. So, essentially what I'm saying to you is light's quite important. But we're going to go back to Texture Shader just for a moment. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to create a really long... How does that look? How does that look? That's too short. Let's go even bigger. 2,000. Look at that. That's a beauty. All right. So, all messing around aside... We're going to jump back into our NVIDIA IRA mode and you can see a damn thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a light source. I'm going to create another plane. This one's going to be the same dimensions. I'm going to select my second plane. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on that scale. Let's try that again. And I'm going to... Nope, that's the wrong damn button. That's why. 90 degrees on our Z axis. And we're going to lift it up by 25 and I'm going to give it some surface properties here real quick. Emissive. I'm going to change it to that. And lo and behold, you can suddenly see some stuff happening. I'm going to change that to KCDMR2. And suddenly there is light. And now you can see our plane. Beautiful. Isn't it just... I mean, look at that. Cool. That's a hell of a light source. All joking aside, what you can see here is one light source on a plane, and you can see how quickly the light drops off. Now this is overexposed, so this white area here, too much light is on it. So I'm going to change the tone mapping, I'm going to adjust my shutter speed up to about five thousandths of a second, and you can see still too much light there. Let's go up to 20,000. Okay, that's more like it. So now we've got our light source casting shadow on our or casting light rather onto our onto our plane our plane plane and you can see it drops off really mega quickly and this is what we refer to as the inverse square law you double the distance away and it's as coarser of as bright which to you right now means absolutely bugger all so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take our light source and i'm going to move it to minus 250 no, minus 500 on there. Now I'm going to change our shutter speed settings back to 128. So we can see now along this scale how quickly the light drops off. It's really bright here and it's really not bright as you get further away. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create two planes, uh, two spheres, sorry. Spheres half a meter across, except this one I'm going to move back on the Z scale. I'm going to move that one. 25 minus 25. Nope, that's the wrong damn thing. Sorry, I'm having a real brain fart. So minus 25 on the Z scale for that one. Now we're going to create another one. And we're going to move this one. 25 onto the Z scale. There you go. So they're side by side. And now I'm going to move this one to kind of there. And I'm going to just deselect them all. So what you can see now is that this one is more brightly lit than this one because it's closer. Which, of course, you think, well, yeah, uh, duh. But as we get... Notice that there's there's a difference, but it's not a big difference. It's, it's noticeable, but not a problem. What happens if I move the light source closer? Let's bring that to there. 
all of a sudden, this is considerably more brightly lit than this. And I would say that that is probably, let's just try and even that up. I'm gonna bring that plane. Gonna just grab that, come on, come on, there we go. I'm gonna move that so that it's about twice as far away. So there we go. So let's say that this is one. This would be 0.5. And because we've doubled the distance, we've quarter, we've got a quarter of as much power, which means this one would be 0.125. So it's not half of the brightness of this one, it's actually a quarter of the brightness. And that's an important thing to remember, is that doubling the distance does not half the power, it reduces the power by 75%. Now, how do we say, let's say we've got these two are characters. Let's say this is Bob and this is Dave. Now we've got Bob and Dave in the scene. We're taking a picture of them both together. We want them to be lit identically. We want the, we don't want them to have the same amount of brightness on them so that we don't have to have a second light source because that's going to get rid of this nice dark shadowy area that we've got this really moody portrait setting that we've got going on here. Now the simple solution to that is we need to remove we need to move this light source significantly further away so let's go to minus 2000 now difficult to see i know because there's bugger or light on the scene all of a sudden but these are very very similarly lit now that you could argue that they have identical amount of light on them so what we're going to do is we're going to actually brighten up our emissive surface we're going to go to like let's go 20,000 and get a much better feel for for that lighting in fact i might even go up to 50,000 there we go. Now you can see these are basically identically lit. Pretty much identical. And that's because the light source is bloody far away. So the actual ratio of difference between the two distances is actually very small. So the light fall off is insignificant at this point. So they're almost identically lit. There is, however, something else we need to bear in mind. And that is, as we get in nice and close to this sphere you can see that shadow is really really hard that's a really really defined shadow that's what we call hard lighting what if we want this shadow we want this the difference between the light and the dark to be a lot more gradual a lot more soft let's say we've got someone who's of uh, the older persuasion and their skin's not quite so smooth we don't want this kind of lighting because it's going to show up every bump and freckle on their face well the simple solution is to take our light source and I'm going to dramatically reduce the brightness again. I'm going to take this down to about, oh, let's say 750. That would be good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in our parameters, I'm going to change the scale and I'm going to go to about 2000 maybe. Right, so we now have a much, much bigger light source, but the shadow is much softer. We can go even further. Let's go even bigger now we've got a massive light source now obviously because of uh, dash studio <laughs> the size of the light source is directly uh, r related to how much power it puts out so we're going to just change our shutter speed settings again i've gone a bit too far there let's go to ten thousandth no not even that let's go to five thousand there we go okay so now we can see nice and clearly that our light source now is much softer and that shadow that drop off is much more attractive and that is because the relative size of the light source to the object that you are illuminating let me rephrase that the size of the light source relative to the object that you're trying to light is directly related to how hard the shadows are so because this light source is freaking huge compared to the light the object that we're trying to illuminate the, sh the shadows are very soft and they're the um, i could spend hours trying to explain how it is but i'll get my models worded up and i'll end up just confusing you more than is necessary so let's just say let's just remember that rule there but what we can also see is that light is bouncing off of the surface of our sphere and actually falling again onto the plane so you can see that light does actually bounce in Das studio which is again something very useful to remember this is not a reflective surface, otherwise you'd be able to see a full-on mirror reflection here. That's just light bouncing off the face of this sphere and clobbering the, the plane below it. And as you can see, because we have the these two objects are 
close together in relation to how far away they are from the actual light source they are basically identically lit and that my friends is a very very useful thing to know when you are adding light to your scenes thanks ever so much for watching guys i hope you found that useful and uh, i will see you in the next video but until then take good care of yourselves guys bye bye